turns out, in a very weird way, uh, you start with the basis for the null space. So suppose, um, let's call it beta prime, because it's not quite beta. Uh, beta prime, or let's say, which is v1 up to vk, is a basis of the null space. And again, it's possible that k is zero. So it's possible that the null space is just a zero space and therefore beta prime is empty. Doesn't matter because even though we have that, we can extend it. So extend beta prime to a basis beta, which is v1 up to vk, vk plus 1 up to vn of v. So the nice thing is, this is first of all your uh, basis for v. So we're like halfway done. And then, I'm not going to repeat this, but what's, what's going on? We have our basis v, and we have our vector space v. We have our vector space w, and we have t. On the one hand, we have the null space. And we know a basis is v1 up to vk. And all those vectors there get sent to zero. On the other hand, t itself has a range, which might not be all of w. And which vectors get sent to the range? Precisely all the other ones. So vk plus 1. Oh, forgot this one. Doesn't work. Um, vk plus 1, dot, 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 up to vn. And basically, by definition of the range, tvk plus 1 up to tvn are in the range. So again, all the red vectors get sent to the zero, all the green ones get sent to the range. So I have shown in that video about the proof of the rank nullity theorem that all the other vectors, they form a basis for the range of t. So know that, let's call this gamma prime, t v k plus 1, dot, 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 up to uh, t v n is a basis of the range of t. All right, so that's good. So we do get a basis for the range of t. So let me just redraw this picture. That's t v k plus 1 up to t v n. But the problem is the range isn't necessarily the whole space w. So not a problem. Let's just extend those to a basis of w. So extend gamma prime to a basis. Let's call it, you know, with w, so of w. So let's do it, and you'll see why we need this, so that the last few vectors correspond to precisely those. tvk plus 1 up to tvn, and Let's call the first few vectors w1 up to wk. I forgot to mention, so uh, we do need dimension of v to be dimension of w. Sorry about that. Um, otherwise, it turns out this might not necessarily be true. We might not have enough vectors on one side or the other. So in particular, if you extend this to a basis of w, here we have n minus k vectors, and to complete this, we have k vectors. All right, so what do we have? We have beta, which starts with the null space, up to vn. So this is the null space. We have gamma, which starts with arbitrary vectors and ends with the range. Of the n. And again, those are all bases, so I've shown in fact that you know rank nullity. All that's left to do is just calculate the matrix of the linear transformation. So calculate T 
from beta to gamma. And how do you do that? Well, you just calculate t at every basis vector, so v1 up to vk, vk plus 1 up to vn, and you express this in terms of your output basis, which is here w1 up to wk, tvk plus 1, and then tvn. All right, what about the first k vectors? Well, by definition of the null space, t of vj, and again, sorry, that's wrong. t of v1, t of vk, t of vk plus 1, t of vn, by definition, t of vj equals 0 for j from 1 up to k, by definition of the null space. But this is 0 w1 plus 0 wk plus 0 t of vk plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 0 t of vn. Which tells us that the first k columns are just zeros. What about the other ones? Well, notice it's kind of silly, but t of vk plus 1 is t of vk plus 1, which is just a bunch of zeros w1 up to wk, and then 1 times t of vk plus 1 plus 0 times everything else. So what this column becomes, becomes a bunch of zeros, except precisely 1 at the diagonal entry. And if you continue this way, you get a 1 here until the very last entry, which becomes a 1 and then a bunch of zeros. So what do you get? You actually get two blocks, one which is the zero matrix, the other one being the identity matrix. But we don't even need to show that. We just need to show that it's diagonal. And well, yes, it is diagonal, which with bunch of zeros and then bunch of ones. And then you just get your result. How nice is that? And as I said, this is not diagonalization, this is just something more general that's not that as useful as diagonalization. All right, I hope you like this little math cookie. Uh, if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.